Welcome back to the Offbit. In a previous video, we looked at how well the Intel Core 2 Quad Q8400 from 2009 ran in 2020. A user asked how well it could go with an overclock. Cam YYDM, this one's for you, mate. Right, first up, we're loading on the Asus P54G41T-MLX from Asus. This motherboard's a socket 775 and running off the G41 chipset. We also have returning the Q8400 Core 2 Quad from 2009. This is a 45 nanometer CPU with 4 megabit of level 2 cache. We're slotting in here two sticks of 2 gigabyte DDR3 RAM from Kingston. This is a 2 gig kit running at 1333. Hard drives we're using today, we're using two SSD WD green drives, one 120 and one 240 gig, and one one terabyte magnetic drive. We're returning back with the GTX 570 from MSI. This is the MS5 N570 GTX Twin Frozer 3 Power Edition Overclock. Core clock runs at 770 megahertz. The memory is running at 2000 and is GDDR5 with 1280 meg of it running on a 320 bit bus. And we placed a 120 mil fan over the North Bridge since we're overclocking. All overclocking ventures always start in the BIOS. So we got here the Q8400 run at 2.66 gigahertz. In this BIOS, we're gonna jump into jumper-free configuration. As you can see, we've got some AI overclocking, which is kind of like the automated stuff. We're gonna set this to manual, and we're gonna set the front side bus frequency to 385. Now I have tweaked around this previously, and this is where my board and CPU ran stable at its maximum, basically. So it may vary from board to board and CPU to CPU. Now do keep in mind that any overclocking that is done on any hardware can cause hardware failures. We're not gonna look at moving the voltages up or down. I generally find that stock voltages on Core 2s generally still give a lot of headway for overclocking. Now setting that CPU frequency should net us 3.11 gigahertz. And there she is, 3.11 gigahertz. Just to verify, I've gone back to the BIOS and we've pulled up the information, 3110 megahertz. Now we've had a successful post and all we did was set the frequency to 385. Everything else we left to auto, but sometimes you need to change the RAM speed so it doesn't overclock over spec. Now we're moving into the CPU benchmarking phase. First up we did CPU ID with our Q84 overclock running at a single core 275.2 and the score for multi was 108.1.1. .1. This has given us a single core boost of 27.1% and the multi core boost at 26.8% which is a fair good margin. Interestingly, it pushed us past the X5450 Xeon and most the i5-760, which is a whole generation in front of it. Our 7-zip scores for single core was 3048. The multi-core score was 10805. Given us a multi-core boost improvement of 14.5% and the single core performance boost at 13.2%. And this bench it positioned just behind the X5450 at 3 gigahertz. Cinebench R15 scored the overclock Q8400 371 points. This just sitting behind the Xeon X5450 at 3 gigahertz, scoring 328, and just in front of the i3 2120 at 3.3 gigahertz, scoring 281 points. The Q8400 overclock netted us a 15.3% boost in performance over the stock clock. 
moving into the GPU benchmark phase. Now we only overclocked the CPU. So the overclock settings, what you're seeing in the benchmarks is for the CPU only, and there was a difference. Our GTX 570 scored in Unigen Heaven, 107 points for the overclock Q8400 and just 84 points for the stock Q8400 settings, giving us a 27.4% boost in performance. Cinebench R15 GPU test gave us 52.52 frames per second on the overclock Q8400 and only 45.37 frames per second on the stock Q8400. Giving Cinebench a 15.8% boost with the overclock. Three mark fire strike scores for the GTX 570 scored us 3,794 with the overclock and without the overclock on the Q8400 we got 3,720. Giving us the smallest amount of performance boost we've seen in all the benchmarks of only 2%. On this channel, we always seem to be playing Fortnite. So our Fortnite scores, our average frame rate, we got 74.6 frames per second. Minimum frame rate was 22 frames per second. Maximum frame rate was 108.4 frames per second. Our 1% lows was as low as 3.1 frames per second and our 0.1% lows were 1.5 frames per second. It comes quickly apparent that the CPU is holding back the GPU. GPU, 108.4 frames a second at max. The CPU always seemed to be flat out 100% and a common occurrence of audio dropping out. Now, we also had issues with models loading in, which is a big problem because houses are part of those things and you cannot go in them until they load. All the games today, we are running on the overclock Q8400 at 3.1 gigahertz. Fortnite's a big fat no for the Q8400. Doesn't matter what you do, it's just not going to cut it. I believe this is due to the Fortnite engine not really being optimized for older and slower hardware. So maybe in the future. Overwatch gave us a better gaming experience. We managed to run this at medium levels for 1080p. Our frame rates were an average of 66.1 frames per second. The minimum frame rate fell to 25.9 frames per second. Maximum frame rate was 70.5. Our 1% lows were 33 frames per second. And our 0.1% lows were 3.6 frames per second. Every now and then it would just sit and try to load some new assets. But once you got them through, it generally ran quite well. And it was I reckon you can play a very competitive game with this with the old Q8400, especially on the overclock. PUBG we had at very low settings and it gave us pretty good gaming experience. Probably not the best for playing competitive, but it's it managed. Our frame rates for PUBG was the average frame rate at 47.4 frames per second, minimum frame rate at 15.6 frames per second, maximum frame rate at 78.7 frames per second, 1% lows at 8.7, and 0.1% lows at two frames per second. Those 0.1% lows, I believe, are from those assets loading. Every now and then, it just had to load something in, and there's just some sort of bottleneck somewhere in the system. So, And it just seems to be with the Core 2, I generally find. But once they're loaded, you're fine to go. It runs pretty good. Minecraft Bedrock Edition, or better known as Windows 10 Edition. Gave us a nice, crispy, smooth feel in the gameplay. Now this game has a 60 frames per second cap on the frame rate, probably for V-Sync. You may achieve height if you have free sync or G-Sync monitors. But our gaming frame rates for Minecraft, average frame rate at 58.1 frames per second, 
minimum frame rate at 48.8 frames per second, maximum frame rate at 60.8 frames per second, 1% lows at 34.7 frames per second, and our 0.1% low frame rate at 28.7. So the Q8400 overclocked running at 1080p in Minecraft Bedrock Edition, big thumbs up. <laughs> Lastly, another personal favorite of mine, Sea of Thieves. Always surprises me how well the Core 2 quad runs of Sea of Thieves. I think you can attribute this to Rare's quality when it comes to making games. Our settings for CFEs was 1080p and we were setting on the curse setting or better known for very low. Our frame rate, average frame rate was 60.2 frames per second. Minimum frame rate at 43.7 frames per second. Maximum frame rate at 84.4 frames per second. 1% lows sat at 26.0 frames per second and our 0.1% lows was 5.3 frames per second. These 0.1% lows were basically asset loading again. So every time you pull out a new weapon or fired a gun or something new happened, it had to load that graphic in and that's where it started. But once it loaded in, it ran pretty good. Overall, this game played quite well on the Q8400, especially with the overclock. It did dip down in some of the bigger battles, but it generally bounced back up again. You could play this game on this PC all day long, but it won't play across the board as smooth as a brand new system or a new system like a 7600 i5 or a 9600 i5 or an i7. But it's definitely playable, and if you dropped it back to 720p, you could probably smooth out a lot of those dips in the bigger battles. And I think this has been the gem in the rough. A 2020 game that can run on a Q8400 from back in 2009 and you can still play it today and it runs smooth. Most of the time at 1080p. Now, summing up Q8400, overclocked. Still gives me a bit of surprise. There's some of the things it can still run. However, there's some things it still can't run. Fortnite, PUBG was pretty much not really worth playing on it. You could do it, but it wouldn't be an enjoyable experience. You'll get to a point where you get killed and it will be because the game had to load some asset. Yep, all in all, I think it's a win. You do need to overclock it. Q8400 in its stock, I don't think it can survive in 2020. But if you do, it will just hold on. It won't be able to run everything, but it will be able to do a fair amount of stuff. Now before we go, I just want to let you know that overclocking your hardware can lead to failures. It can lead to data corruptions, so you have to do it at your own peril. Well that's all for us from the Offbit today. Now do remember, if you like this content, there is a like button down there. If you want to see more of this content, don't forget to subscribe. You can also let me know about your thoughts and some of the experiences that you've had, good and bad, with overclocking, and leave them in the comments. Alright, till next time, we'll see you on the Offbit.